In seventh grade, you learned about volume and surface area of certain 3D shapes. And the word that we use for a 3D shape is a solid. Sometimes you'll see that word. You'll see the word solid being used. And you learned the formula for the volume of a prism, which is one of our most basic shapes, which is length with height. So remember, prism is uh, just a box, a 3D rectangle, whatever you want to call it. And the formula that you learned was length times width times height. That's how you find the volume of the prism. But there's a more general formula that you can use, which is V equals big BH. And the reason that it's a more general formula is because this big B, this capital letter B, is interchangeable. And the reason that we use a capital letter in this formula instead of a lowercase is because it doesn't stand for like one of the lengths of the sides, it stands for another formula. So for example, the reason that the formula for this prism is length times width times height is because the base area right here, the base shape, is a rectangle. This is a rectangle. And so the way that you find the area of a rectangle is you do length times width. And so that's this part of the formula, big B, the area of the base. So now in this lesson, when we start talking about cylinders, the area of the base or the shape of the base is a circle. And so we're not going to use length times width because that's not how you find the area of a circle. We're going to use A equals pi r squared. So the formula for a cylinder, or the more specific formula, if we use our big BH formula, area of the base times the height, is V equals pi r squared, because that's how you find the area of a circle, times height. So let's use that in our examples below. We have to find the volume of the cylinder, and we're going to round it to the nearest tenth. Now, you should always pay attention to what decimal place they're asking you to round to, because if you round to the wrong decimal place, technically you are not completely correct. So we're going to go to the tenth. So we'll, we'll save everything until the end, and then at the very end, we'll round to the tenth. So we have a formula. So anytime we have a formula involved in a question, you should always write it down. Even if you don't know what to do with it, you should always write it down. And since we're looking for volume of a cylinder, it's pi r squared h. And then we plug in what we know. We say, well, I know that the pi, well, I know pi. I'll use that as 3.14, even though it's a rounded value. And the radius here is 3 squared times the height here is 6. And I'll bring down the V equals. Now I just have to remember permdas, grab my calculator, hopefully you still have your calculator, and let's do it. So 3 squared is 9, so I'll bring everything else down, 3.14 times 9 times 6, and now just straight across multiplication, I get V equals 301.44, and since it says to round in the earth's tenth, that rounds to 301.4 because it doesn't round up. And the label for volume is cubic units. So this is going to be meters to the third, or you can write cubic meters. Either of those labels is fine. It doesn't matter which one you put. What I want you to understand and that I've come across with students is that people think that this exponent means that the number is cubed. That exponent has nothing to do with the number. It's telling your label that you're in the third dimension. Volume is a 3D shape. Area is a 2D shape. And so that's why area gets a square because area is two-dimensional and volume is three-dimensional and so that's why it gets a cube. This exponent has nothing to do with the number. It always has to do with the label. All right, in example two, we have to still use the same technique, but we're not finding the volume. If you look at the question, we actually have the volume. So this is another example of where it's very helpful to plug in the formula, to write down the formula, because not everything is on one side. It's not always on the same side. Sometimes you have things on the left and things on the right. So I'll write down my formula, V equals pi r squared h, and now I'm going to plug in what I know. They tell me that the volume is 314, so that goes in for V. This goes in the V spot. It doesn't go in on the, on the right-hand side. Now, pi is 3.4, so let's plug that in. The radius 
Be careful, this is not a radius. This is a diameter, and so the radius is five. You can't just blindly plug in numbers into the formula that you see in the question. You have to use your brain and think about what they stand for. So again, this is the diameter so that the radius here is five. You can't plug in the diameter because there's no spot for it. And now I don't know the H, so I leave it. Now the eventual goal is to get the height by itself. So we have to do our operations to get the everything away from this H. So the first thing that I'll do is I will do this exponent right here, five squared, because that will make it look less complicated. So 314 equals 3.14 times 25 times H. Next thing I'm gonna do is this 3.14 times 25. Now there's a bunch of different ways I'll, you can do this. I'll show you one technique and then I'll show you another one. 3.14 times 25 is 78.5 H. Now, if you drop a line down the equal sign, the inverse is divide whoops, by 78.5, and you get H equals 4. Exactly. That was convenient, so it's four, and since this is not area, and it's not volume, it's not going to be cubed, so it's just regular inches. Your label should relate to the dimension you're looking for. Height is not an area, height is not a volume, height is just a linear measurement. Now, there is another way you could have done it. You could have picked it up right here and done 314 equals 3.14 times 25 times h, and then started doing inverses, then you would divide by 3.14. You don't have to write this down, by the way. Then you could have divided by 25, and you'd still get 4. You don't have to write anything down that's in black over here. Um, but it's more inverses. I prefer, my preference is to do all of the math first before I do the inverse, so I just only have one inverse to do. If you prefer, you could do multiple inverses, you'll still get the same four, but it's your choice. I don't care. Pick a way you like and make sure you do it correctly. I'd like you to pause the video and try example B on your own. All right, so they asked us to round to the nearest whole number. So technically, I had to round this to four, even though it was almost exactly 3.5, but I have to follow the directions. And again, if you chose to do your inverses here, that's fine. I chose to do all the math at once, but again, it's your preference. There are a couple ways we could do example three. We could find the volume of the whole jar and subtract the amount of salsa there is. But I think less complicated than that is if we just find out how much is the empty space, and then that's all. That's it. So let's pretend that we need to figure out this measurement, because we really do. What's the height of that empty space? Well, 10 minus 4 is going to be 6 centimeters. So the height of the empty salsa is 6 centimeters. So um, this is a cylinder, so I'm going to write my formula, V equals pi r squared h. And let's find the volume of the empty space. So V equals pi times the radius is 5, and the height of the missing salsa portion is 6. So now we just do... Permdas, pi times 25 times 6. And the volume, it doesn't say what you have to round to, so you can really pick whatever you want. I usually do like the 10th, so 471.2 centimeters. Since it's volume, it's cubic centimeters. Last one, <clears throat> about how many gallons of water does the co cooler contain? And we'll use this information right here 
when we um, get our answer because it looks like they give us the labels in feet, but then their answers are in gallons, so we'll figure that out. So uh, let's figure out the volume of the cooler to begin with in feet. So V equals pi R squared H. And if you notice, every time I have a question, I'm writing down my work. Many of you just want to go straight to the calculator. You have to put things down on the paper before you even touch the calculator. So let's plug it in. V equals pi, the radius. Ooh, well, this is going to be the radius. This is going to be the circle. So the radius is right here, and that's going to be half a foot. So, 0.5 squared times the height is 1.7. All right, PERMDAS, pi. 0.5 squared is 0.25 times 1.7. Pi times 0.25 times 1.7 is 1.335 cubic feet. And now we're going to use this piece of information which they told us one cubic foot is 7.5 gallons. So right away I probably know it's either B or C because this is just a little over one cubic foot. So my answer should be a little over seven and a half gallons. So on, on a test you can use pr some process of elimination and educated guessing, I would maybe guess B or C, uh, but let's see how to do this. We want to use one of our fabulous proportions. One cubic foot is 7.5 gallons, so 1.335 cubic feet equals how many gallons? So when you cross multiply, You get 10.0125, which would then lead me to pick choice B. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me next.